What's up guys, this is Harrison Ormson with Ormson and Graham Design. Today I'm going to be starting my series on shrimp. You guys have been asking me to do this for months. It's been highly anticipated by most of you guys and I'm going to get started on it today. So today basically I'm going to go over basic care and keeping of shrimp as well as shrimp breeding and basically what you're going to see in the best kind of shrimp setup or other setups for shrimp. And I'm going to give you a tour of this discus tank, it has some Amano shrimp and some red cherries, as well as my breeding shrimp, or my breeding tank for red cherry shrimp that I have upstairs. Alright, so parameters of the tank, you guys have asked about a lot. Basically temperature, you want for comfortable for it to be comfortable for shrimp, you want right around 72 up to you know 85, anywhere past that, they're, it's either going to shorten their life or they're not going to be happy, they're going to be stressed out. For breeding, you want right between 75 and 82. In theory, the warmer the tank is, the faster they'll breed. This tank's 85 degrees. I see berry shrimp in here all the time. And yeah, but uh, typically when you get a tank that warm though, it's a lot harder to keep plants alive. So I keep my shrimp tank right at 80 degrees, which is a safe spot, you know, 78, 80 degrees for most aquarium plants. And you're still gonna get the breeding a habitat or habits out of the shrimp that you really want. So pH, as long as you stay away from pH swings, most pHs are perfectly fine. You don't really have to watch pH that much. With the higher grade shrimp or the different species like crystal reds, bee shrimp, all that stuff is gonna be, they're gonna need more, you're gonna have to watch the pH more. With red cherries, anything in between, you know, six where there's virtually no biological bacteria activity up to, you know, eight, 8.5 above that you want to stay away from there those are the extremes and as long as you don't have swings they're gonna be fine uh, most shrimp are gonna want pH right around you know 6.5 6.8 right in that area this tank 6.8 I haven't tested that tank in forever um, another weird shrimp cardinal shrimp which is something you know new to the shrimp world kind of new they're taking hold but they're from Indonesia, Sulawesi Lakes. Really cool shrimp. They like a higher pH, which is weird, right around 8.2. And that's just because there's a lot of weird stuff chemistry-wise going on in, the, in those lakes with rock work and stuff raising the pH. But anyways, that's basically what you want for the pH of a shrimp tank. And nitrates, you don't want to you know, watch your nitrates. You want to have plants typically to soak up nitrates Shrimp love plants. Shrimp love densely planted tanks where they have a lot of cover and they feel safe. The safer they feel, the more comfortable they are, the more they're gonna breed. And what else is there? Um, tank size. Typically, I follow the rule of five to 10 shrimp per gallon. This is a 55 gallon tank. There's probably 45, 50 shrimp. There could be tons, but the discus eat them. I'll go over that later. Predatory fish with shrimp in the next video little thing. But in the 40 gallon breeder up there, I intend to have 350, 400 shrimp in there and then start selling them off. Uh, another thing, let's see, tank mates. You know, a lot of things can be eat shrimp. They're bottom of the food chain, little guys. Uh, they like to eat algae, so they can be kept in a tank alone. I have three or four, I'm not actually sure how much, I have a few no-tech tanks, natural light tanks, where it gets closed, I put a lid on it, and I don't ever touch it again. They eat the algae that grows off the plants, the plants filter the water for them, and they're good to go. It's that simple. Feeding them is really easy. You can feed them, or you can not feed them. Typically, if you feed them, you're going to have a lot more you know, snails, maybe um, planaria, because they can really survive off of the algae and the leftover food in a tank. I feed my uh, shrimp tank upstairs, you know, once a week, maybe. I use the sh Blue Valve Shrimp Granules, it's one of the best foods out there. It's a really good stable food. And I use algae wafers, they love algae wafers. If I'm ever going to go catch a bunch, I just drop an algae wafer on the ground and they herd over it and I just scoop them up. Tank mates, up in that tank I have assassin snails pond snails, nerite snails, Malaysian trumpet snails, 
no problems at all from the assassin snails. I've never seen an assassin snail eat a shrimp. I've never seen a dead shrimp from an assassin snail. Uh, maybe if you have a sick shrimp, then the assassin snail might be able to catch it. But even then, it's only doing you a favor by culling that sick shrimp that would endanger the health of your colony. Um, smaller fish can be kept with them, but basically when they breed, if you want to have the optimum breeding, you're going to want to keep them alone because everything eats baby shrimp. They're tiny, teeny tiny. Anything can eat them. Uh, white cloud mountain minnows, yeah, they're going to eat them. Celestial pearl danios, yeah, they're going to eat them. Neon tetras, they're going to eat them. The bigger ones, not so much. Uh, bigger fish like these discus, the golden rams, they love red cherry shrimp. I see them go after a shrimp and sometimes miss. I actually have a pretty cool video of a discus catching a leaf instead of a shrimp. But um, yeah, bigger red cherry shrimp are gonna be a meal for most of the bigger fish you're gonna find. Baby red cherry shrimp are gonna be a meal for almost anything. And, and I'll go over that in the next video. All right, so this is the discus tank. In here I've got, I think, four Amano shrimp and, you know, 30 to 40 red cherry shrimp. Probably not gonna be able to find any right now because they don't like to come out during the day. The big fish are all awake and hunting during the day, so they get eaten pretty quick if they come out. Occasionally you'll see one pop out, you know, in the dwarf sage or, you know, hiding in the plants in the Fissidens fontanus over here or in the Java ferns. But most of the time they stick below the driftwood in the back where the fish can't get to them. At night they come out and they scavenge and they eat algae and do all that kind of stuff, but you're not really going to see them if there's predatory fish in the tank. Uh, the Amano shrimp are, as you probably know, much bigger. They're great algae eaters and even then uh, you might be able to see... Yeah, there's a few back there behind there. They tend to stay behind there, you know, eating whatever they can find. Leftover foods, algae, they come out at night as well. But as you can see, this tank is pretty heavily planted. Obviously not done yet, it's kind of dirty anyways. And that's what shrimp like. They like a lot of plants, they like to eat the algae that grows on plants. They like to, you know, they like to have a natural setup. And people all the time are saying, you have shrimp in there? That's crazy, there's discus in there, there's red, there's golden rams in there. Yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm aware. And Basically, these shrimp in here, they breed out of control. Uh, honestly, I've been taking the buried females out just to get the populations back up in my breeding tank. But if I left them alone in here, these guys would not be able to put a dent in the population of shrimp. They would breed out of control, and they would probably start showing themselves more during the day because their numbers would be so high. But if you are doing a shrimp tank and you intend to breed them, do not put them with discus. I'm doing this because I have hundreds of red cherry shrimp and I really honestly could probably care less what some happens to some of them. And yeah, so in here, just a quick video. I got ember tetras, got golden rams, there's the long fan. I'm gonna be selling one of them because they keep fighting. Discus, I've got banjo catfish. They probably, the banjo catfish probably eat the red cherry shrimp at night. Um, Otisane cliffs, there's four coolie loaches in here, I need to get them out. We're gonna put the cories in here. And some crypts, a bunch of plants. This tank is pretty low tech as of now. Typically, a lot of people are wary of putting fertilizers or CO2 with shrimp. They can handle it. Uh, I wouldn't do it with a breeding tank just because it, it might slow their breeding down. It might, you know, kill some of the babies. I honestly don't know enough about certain dosings and fertilizers and CO2 boosters and stuff to give you an accurate, you know, this is gonna hurt your shrimp, this is not. So I just try to stick away from that kind of stuff. They like low tech anyways. So I'm gonna go show you guys my shrimp breeding tank. And all right, so this is my 40 gallon breeder. This is the shrimp breeding tank. So I put the window down. Uh, right now, it's kind of hard to see anything. I just put two big pieces of Mopani wood, and it is very, very dark in there. But, yeah. So, I'm probably going to be doing a water change pretty soon to clear up the water. Here, if you can see, I put in some algae wafers. I sold some shrimp today, so I had to catch some. They're very dark. 
they like uh, darker substrates. It uh, helps them camouflage. If you think about it, like, if an animal is brown, but it's on a black substrate, it's going to be as dark as possible. It's going to make its colors appear darker and darker to help blend in with a darker substrate. They tend to bleach out if you use white sand or something like that, and they don't look as good. And there's a nice contrast on the darker substrate. So this tank, I've got two sponge filters. You can see that one, it's pretty dark. And another sponge filter there. These sponge filters right now, uh, they're actually being used, which is not common for my shrimp tanks. I just upgraded to a 40 gallon breeder, so I need a little bit of extra filtration while the plants catch up. Soon, I will be adding a lot more plants, a lot more driftwood, and hopefully making this tank self-sustaining. The idea for this is kind of like a shrimp pond, honestly. I like the, you know, open top, viewing from the top, and it just is pretty cool to me. So, and I like self-sustaining stuff, and shrimp like old water and low-tech, so it's kind of a match made in heaven, really. And that's another thing I forgot to talk about. In the tank downstairs, I've got an Eheim classic canister filter and an Aqua Clear 70. The shrimp are gonna get sucked up, honestly. Like, it won't end well for them. I Every time I clean out the Aqua Clear, there's a few shrimp in the bottom still alive. I just toss them back in the tank. Doesn't really do them harm, but some of the shrimp, I guarantee they get pureed by the little uh, filter when they go in. And so, the best filtration for them is either natural filtration through plants or sponge filters. Yes, you can take a power filter and cover it with um, sponges, but that just tends to look ugly and you get a lot of crap getting pulled into that sponge. Kind of gross. But anyways, yeah, so yeah, this is this tank. A lot of shrimp in here. Let's see if I can get a close up. Yeah, there's some red cherries. Yeah, Malaysian trumpet snails, nerite snails, a lot of stuff in here. Um, sexing shrimp, that's what I get a lot of questions on. How do you tell the gender of a shrimp? So I'm just gonna put this here and see if you can see. This guy here, is that's a male. If you can see his tail, it's a lot thinner in comparison to see how fat her tail is. That's a female over here. Uh, females are uh, usually a lot bigger. They tend to get, you know, almost an inch long. And the males, you know, a centimeter, a little more than that. And typically, they have less color than females. Females are darker in color. I've been breeding these guys, and it's a strong line, so the males and the females are both very dark with dark legs and everything. So they're pretty high grade. There's a there's a red Riley. I gotta get him out of there. But yeah, so here's the shrimp tank. Some plants, some driftwood going in. They love densely planted stuff. They like algae wafers. That's what they're eating right there. Uh, water sprite, cryptocorn. Cryptocorn is mainly a root feeder. So I mean, they don't filter the water, but it's got big leaves and it grows algae, and they love it. Uh, Nubius. A big Anubius, lots of Java fern. Anacharis is great for them because it gets them something to grab onto in the upper water column. Typically, in a shrimp tank, you see a lot of stuff, you know, on the ground. And not a lot of space is being used in the upper water column, which is a waste of space, really. If you have Anacharis or floating plants or anything like that, it's great because they utilize that space. Um, shrimp don't really free swim a lot. They can, they can do it perfectly fine. But they prefer to have something to hold on to. There's a buried shrimp, or not a buried, a uh, saddled shrimp right there. Um, so if you can give them something to hold on to that's higher in the water column, then they'll actually utilize that space, which allows you to have more shrimp and, you know, have more shrimp. So, yeah, there's the shrimp video hope you guys like it give me suggestions if i missed anything please let me know i'll do another video or something like that like and subscribe check me out on instagram thanks for watching